Alright, so a few days ago I checked out the React Haste DK87, which I mentioned was a perfect keyboard to pick up and mod, since it's so cheap and has a nice simple shell, and I really wanted to get rid of that really hideous logo. So now since I've been asked numerous numerous times, I'll show you how to spray paint your mechanical keyboard at home. And just a really massive warning, this will more than likely void your warranty, so please consider that. So this tutorial is for most users out there, so anyone can do it. I specifically did this so that anyone can go to their local hardware store and be able to complete this project. Therefore, even though it will be of really good quality, it will not give you the highest quality that professional painting jobs will provide with spray guns and such. Additionally, this will be mostly for mechanical keyboards that have some sort of top shell. So this is the cover that covers the metal backplate that the key switch is mounted to. So the first thing to do is to disassemble the keyboard. I would highly recommend trying to find a disassembly guide for your board, but for most boards it's just having to unscrew a couple of screws and releasing some plastic tabs. Okay, so prep is the most important bit in doing this. First you'll need to sand the top shell which will most likely be ABS plastic. I'll be using 400 grit wet and dry sandpaper. Now the grit just refers to how rough the sandpaper is. So since this is a completely brand new keyboard, I don't want to get rid of any scratches or anything and I don't want to create very deep scratches in it. If I did have scratches, I could use something like 300 grit sandpaper or something as low as maybe 240 grit sandpaper if it's really severe. So basically these scratches will allow the primer to go into these gaps and get a firmer grip on the plastic. This is opposed to a completely smooth surface where there is less places to grab. So I'll just rip a little piece off and I'm going to be using some blue foam as a sanding block to keep my sanding level and flat. You can use anything else that's close to a sanding block though. And since we're using wet and dry sandpaper, I'm going to be using some soapy water which is just dishwashing liquid mixed with water and I'm going to apply some on the paper and the surface itself. What this will do is help lubricate the process but it will also allow the sandpaper not to get clogged up. Now all I'm going to do is start sanding the shell until I get that bare plastic look. You don't want to go too hard as to reduce the shell by a fair distance, you just want to scuff up and disturb the surface instead of reshaping it. If you go too hard you may end up having sharp 90 degree angle edges on the board which will be really uncomfortable for the wrists. And make sure you also get those exposed inside edges of the plastic as well as this will be painted. Constantly respray the surface with the soapy water to re-lubricate it and to make it easier to sand. And use your fingers for any curved surface and also slightly round off the edges of the shell. After you're done, wash the shell in water and then dry it and this is how it should look. As you can see, the surface is all scratched up and rough and is bare plastic now. For comparison, the inside edges of the keyboard are still that glossy original finish. If yours is rougher than this, then that's absolutely fine as well. Okay, so now to fill up those gaps, we're going to be using some primer. What primer does is fill in the gaps and scratches so you can perfect the surface for painting and it also acts as an adhesion promoter for the paint to stick. If I were to paint straight on a glossy surface, the paint will find it quite difficult to stick and may run. There are various types of primer that you can buy. There's primer filler or spray putty which is for filling in a lot of deep scratches and imperfections. Perhaps consider this if your keyboard is really really messed up. There's plastic primer which may be a bit more expensive and is also just a bit harder to work with. There's also etch primer which is for metals but I'll be using this surface primer which is somewhat thin but still has the gap filling properties. If you can't find it by this name, surface primer, any normal primer will probably be the same thing. But before spraying we have to tape up the insides of the shell. This doesn't need to be perfect but 
All it's doing is protecting the tabs and the inside edges from getting any paint on them that may impact on the fitting of the shell. If there's too much paint on there, it can make the shell more difficult to be put back on and take off since the paint will add thickness to the plastic. Safety is of course of utmost importance, so make sure you're in a well ventilated area like an open garage or just go outside. Also wear a mask if you have one. It's most suitable to paint in mild temperatures, so from about 20 to 27 degrees Celsius with a humidity of approximately 50% or less. If it's too cold, you might find it more difficult to get a good finish and you might run into the orange peel effect. Also, try not to paint in direct sunlight. I like to elevate the shell to make it a bit more easier to paint since a spray paint can best performs when it's in a vertical position. If you put it in a horizontal position, it can start to drip and clog. I'm going to start approximately 20cm away from the surface and I'm going to spray the inside edges first. Spraying the inside edges first will help avoid too much build up when trying to spray these parts later. After spraying those inside edges, I'll wait for about 5 minutes so it can dry a bit. And then I'll spray the rest of the shell. I don't want to go too slow since I don't want the primer to be too thick. I just want enough to fill in those scratches. Building up a very thick layer will make the job more weaker. After letting that dry, we can see how it went. If there's no imperfections, spray it again after waiting 10 to 15 minutes. However, I'll be taking off the masking tape, and as you can see, the finish is pretty much perfect. However, this is because I used only 400 grit sandpaper. If you still have scratches because you used coarser sandpaper, then that's absolutely fine. I have some fingerprints on here since I was too impatient, so we're gonna be doing this step anyway. This time I'll be using a more fine sandpaper to even out the fingerprints. This is the same case if you still have scratches. Since the grooves from the fingerprints are very shallow, I'll only be using about 1000 grit wet and dry sandpaper. I could easily use something like 800 grit, but using a finer grit will give you more flexibility, but will just take longer to level out surfaces. So I'm just going to sand the whole top surface of the shell like before, but I'll leave the inside edges since they're perfect as they are. If your scratches are deeper than mine, you may have to go do something like 700 or perhaps even 600 grit sandpaper. Also, make sure that you're using soapy water when sanding. As you can see, it's leveled out now, and some of the black plastic is exposed again. Now just tape it off just like we did before, and have another round with a primer. This time I don't need to concentrate on the edges so much, so I can go straight to priming the main surface areas. If you still have scratches that were not leveled out during the sanding, you may have to lay on the primer a bit thicker, but since mine has a good surface, I'll only be applying some light coats. Basically keep repeating this step until you reach a perfect surface to paint on. Since mine is in good condition, I'm done with the primer. And as you can see, the fingerprints are gone and the shell surface is completely covered and even. Now we'll be ready for painting after another 10 to 15 minutes. Now the paint that you pick is up to you. I'm in Australia so brands will vary, but generally price will determine the quality of the paint, its durability and its ease of use. 
You can use a cheapo $2 can of paint if you really wanted to, but usually they are more difficult to use as it's a bit harder to get a nice even finish with them, and they may not adhere as easily and therefore be less durable. But here I have my quite old Ducky Shine 3. This is my first keyboard I ever ever painted, and it was done with zero primer, zero sanding, zero top coat, and I straight up just used $2 cans of paint to do this, and it's still after all this time looking absolutely fine. So it's your choice, but today I'm going to be using an automotive touch-up paint from Duplicolor. And this is their Blaze Blue paint. This is moderately expensive in comparison to the other consumer paints at a hardware store. It's not from a paint store or anything, but I've had good results from this and I've found it really easy to use. And lastly, before we get to painting is colour choice. Skip ahead if you don't want a quick lesson on colour. Colour is a completely personal preference, but it may be beneficial for you to check out the colour wheel before making your decision. So pretty much the first thing you learn in design is the colour wheel, and in particular colour harmony. The two main schemes are analogous colours, which are the adjacent colours on the colour wheel, and then there are the complementary colours, which are the opposite colours. These will generally give you a coherent look as the colours will be in harmony with each other. So in this case we have black and white keycaps, but these are neutral so pretty much anything will go with them. But these keycaps actually have orange characters on them, so I'm going to go with blue since it's a complementary colour. Also a matte or glossy paint will show imperfections more easily that may occur during painting, or if there's still light scratches on the plastic shell since the paint is more smooth. However, a metallic paint can much more easily hide little specks and tiny scratches because of its speckled nature. So now we can paint. Just make sure you tape it up like before and wear the appropriate equipment. The colour painting is nearly the same as spraying on the primer, but I like to take it a bit more slower since it's more difficult to fix colour paint in comparison to primer. Just like before, I'm going to spray from about 20cm away and I'm going to concentrate on the inside edges first. I'm making sure I don't go too heavy so my strokes are a tad quicker than before. What I'm mainly looking for is not to build up too much wet paint on top of each other that can blob it up and cause running. And also it will just take much much longer to dry. Also remember that the inside edges don't need to be completely painted at this stage because when we're making our other passes, paint will continue to go over those edges as well. After getting the edges, let it dry for about 5 minutes so we don't get that wet build up and then proceed to coat the rest of the shell making sure it's not too heavy. After each coat, make sure to look for any imperfections or pieces of dust that may have fallen onto it. If you find any of these, let it dry completely and then use a very fine sandpaper, something like 1000 grit or higher, to get rid of the imperfection. You don't want to wait till later to do this as the paint will be much thicker and it will be much more difficult to repair. Add another coat to the shell. Now depending on the type of finish you want, you may want to go heavier but I'm looking for a satin look that's slightly textured and rough. If you want a gloss finish, you can go heavier, giving the paint a more smoother finish. So now after 3 solid light medium coats, I have a really good coverage on the top shell. 
So now on the final coat, I'm gonna go even lighter to get that textured finish that I want. Which is of course much more easier to achieve than a glossy or completely matte finish. I'm kind of dusting the top shell with a paint and this will give it a very even look as well. Remember, if you see any imperfections, immediately stop and let it dry for a good while and use 1000 grit wet and dry sandpaper to fix it. Okay, so now that I'm completely happy with my color finish, I'm gonna add some clear top coat. What this will do is just add a clear protective coating over the paint to make it more durable and to stay more vibrant for longer. Again, your choice of clear top coat is up to you depending on the finish you desire. There are the three main types of clear coat. We have gloss, matte, and satin in the middle. Gloss is typically the most common and easiest to find. You can still achieve a somewhat satin finish with this if you use heaps of light coats and allow for adequate drying. The matte and satin clear coats are quite easy to use. I'm gonna leave my tape on since I'm fine with the blue finish and basically I'm gonna be using the same technique that we've been using before. I'll start approximately 20 centimeters away and I'll do the inside edges first. I'll be using a satin clear coat as it's the easiest to get looking good and provides a textured surface that doesn't show fingerprints. Getting these inside edges first and letting it dry for two to five minutes is really important as too much buildup of the clear coat can make it appear somewhat glossy. So I'm using slightly lighter coats than what I did with the paint and primer, but I'll be doing more runs. After waiting for it to dry after doing the inside edges, move on to the rest of the shell. After each coat, let it sit for about 10 minutes. Drying times will be dependent on the spray you're using and how heavy you've laid it on, but approximately 10 to 15 minutes is usually adequate. What this does allow is the spray to be dry and not wet, so the additional layers don't keep compounding as wet paint. Allowing the paint to dry for too long however, will allow the paint to harden up and cure and kind of close off, and the paint will find it harder to grab onto the previous coating. Having it still in the drying process will allow the paint to merge like wet liquids do. So I'll do this three times, and on that third coat, I will do that light dusting I did before to maintain that textured finish. Now it's really really important to just leave it and not to touch it at all and let it dry overnight or for a day. You can pick it up earlier but just to make sure I left it overnight to dry. The finish will get stronger and stronger as the days go on so I even let it be for a couple of days. Alright so now it's done I can take off the masking tape and there. It looks perfect and is the exact finish I was aiming for. When putting it back together, try using a soft surface to avoid scratches. The blue complements the orange quite well, and the satin textured finish looks even and doesn't attract fingerprints, making it look awesome all time round. So that's that, you can turn a normal looking keyboard into something special and personal. You can get more intricate with your designs with multiple colours by masking off different areas, but generally a single or two tone coloured top shell looks best in my opinion. Remember when replacing or removing keycaps to use wire keycap pullers to avoid scratching or denting the inside edges of the shell. Also when dealing with the stabilized keycaps, always go away from the edge. If you want to check out this keyboard, I have an unboxing and a review on it. And I think it's just a great keyboard to mod with considering it's simple design for a cheap keyboard. Alright, so I hope that helped with anyone who wants to paint their board. 
I did try to go quite in depth, but if I did miss anything, please do tell me, and good luck.